Hey guys, welcome back to a vlog. It is Thursday, July 27th. It's 11.30 almost. I've been here since 10. I'm here till 6, 5.30 or 6. So we have 30 minutes until my next client. I don't really have anything to do. I have to sweep really quickly and wipe off my wax pot. But I wanted to touch on a topic. So in my last video, I mentioned that I was exhausted. And you probably could tell in the video, my energy was just super low. And something that comes with entrepreneurship, being an esthetician period, literally, I feel like anything comes with burnout for the most part, but when you own your own business, it just adds another layer. So if you feel burned out, you have to nip it in the bud. When you feel that you're feeling run down, exhausted, you're losing passion, you're losing motivation, you may or may not wanna to go to work, you find that you're not showing up the way that you probably should, take a step back. So what I do, because I've been feeling burned out as of lately, there's a lot going on. So I just finished up my summer semester with school. I'm getting ready for fall semester. I'm preparing for all of that. I am in busy season at the salon. So with waxing, summers are really, really busy. I have a puppy. So there's a lot going on that has shifted my routine that I'm having to adjust to on top of showing up for myself and my clients. And we all know that whatever's happening outside of your work is it can it, it can affect you and trickle into your work if you don't catch it so what i do when i'm feeling burned out or just really tired and not motivated is i immediately dial back i get off of social medias i have significantly less screen time i try to go to sleep earlier i take epsom salt baths i do anything that i can do that involves self-care to me i'll practice yoga go for a walk whatever small things that are productive that will benefit you mentally or physically i do i up my water intake my lemon water this is something that's really overlooked but a lot of us are dehydrated <laughs> estheticians or hairstylists lash techs we're constantly going and doing clients and we'll look up and it's 5 p.m and we have not drank enough water so get yourself a cup or what have you and keep your lemon water or lime water in it and try to take six periodically you notice you feel exponentially better when you can stay hydrated so i have to make that a priority normally i'm pretty good but i do fall off so i do think the past few days i do feel run down because i haven't been drinking as much because i have felt pretty busy and just overwhelmed so whatever you can do to take care of yourself, you have to be super extra times 10 to get yourself back. Now, there's a difference between burnout and not having passion for something. So I think they can kind of look the same. So let's say you're an esthetician and either you're new or you've been doing this for a while. I think new estheticians, obviously you're going to feel overwhelmed, possibly burned out way easier it may last a little bit longer because you have to get used to working and you have to get used to your craft so that's relatively normal and it will pass but let's say somebody like me <clears throat> you've been doing this for a while and you feel completely drained you don't like showing up to work anymore you don't enjoy what you're doing per se you just feel an overall feeling of Blah, blah like not feeling it that's when i would consider choosing a different path or considering a different path outside of what you're doing because you may just not like what you're doing and it, you could be forcing it so i've done that in the past when i did hair when i did lashes working at sephora for me there were times where i had to admit and accept that i, I was past that space of my life or I wasn't passionate. When I did lash extensions, I'm just someone who does not enjoy doing lashes, P 
period. And I did them for a while. I wasn't getting better. I didn't want to get better. I wasn't passionate about it. You, you know when something's for you or when you're forcing it. With waxing, when I first started, it was difficult because it was new. So you're going to feel overwhelmed and you're going to feel anxious and, and just nervous. But you're still excited and you still want to do better. I think that's how you know if you really enjoy doing something. This could be your passions if you feel that drive to be better, do better. And you still want to show up even when it's difficult. That's, in my opinion, how you know. So to be burned out is one thing. You will more than likely get past it, okay? But if you just don't have any passion for what you're doing, just let it go, in my opinion. Find something, try something else. You may not, when you first get out of school, you may not love your first job. You may think you wanna do facials and then you decide, not feeling it, I wanna wax or do something else. So it may take a few tries to really find your niche and find what really works for you. So I just wanted to touch on burnout since I've been kind of feeling like that. But I get this feeling every summer. So this is nothing new to me and I just navigate it the best way that I can. But trust me, you'll get through it. You will. In life period, anything that you're going through, I promise you'll get through it, okay? Let's go ahead and get ready for this next client. I had to put my apron on for sure today. I usually do have it on, but some days I don't. But these scrubs are from Figs, and I'm sorry. No shades of Figs because I know the girlies love Figs, okay? Figs do not hit for me. They're like this matte material. They attract every possible lint ever. I have to keep a lint brush on me. I usually wear Lago scrubs. Those are my favorite right now, but my coworker just told me about the mandala scrubs. So I'm gonna go ahead and order these and see how I feel about them. They're very cheap, they're $16.99. I spend way more than that on my scrubs. My Lago scrubs I think are like 36, I think, which is not bad, but it's more than $16.99. But these allegedly are the most comfortable scrubs ever. So I'm gonna try them and see how I feel. I'll update you guys. But FYI, my favorite scrubs are from Lago. L-A-G-O. That's normally what I have on. They say Lago right here. They're not even a big brand. I think they're newer, but I love those scrubs. So Lago, if you ever see this video, send me an email, sponsor me, please, because I love Lago scrubs. So yeah, we'll see if I like those. And I meant to tell y'all. So I got nominated for Charlotte's Best in Waxing this year. So if you guys watch me and subscribe to me, I'm gonna put a link in my description box for you guys to go on there and vote for me. I know y'all don't know me that well yet, but it would mean the world to me if I could win this. So I'm gonna put the link. You go under Health and Beauty, under Waxing. It will say Bear Beauty Charlotte. That's me. There's another Bear Beauty Studio, so make sure you, you hit the right one if you do vote for me. I appreciate it so much. You can vote every day, and I believe the winners are announced on August 4th or 5th, so it would mean the world to me. I appreciate it so, so much. I did not even know I was nominated, so that made me happy. There's a lot of people on there that I know, so we'll see, but yeah. Vote for me, please. Thank you. All right, I need to get myself in gear. It is literally 11.40. All right, let's go. Okay, so when I set up for a client's service, maybe a Brazilian, I told you guys I have this cover, this black cover from Amazon. I'm going to link everything in the description box if I remember. This is under lash table cover, I believe. Then I have this pink wax pad from Lash and Wax Co. I buy exam table paper in bulk from Amazon and then I have these dental bibs that I use sometimes just as extra protection. So what I'll do is disinfect the table, then I'll disinfect the wax pad. 
Then I'll place the exam paper over the wax pad and then the dental bib. So the thing with the wax pad is you technically don't have to use exam table paper. I just feel like it adds an extra layer of protection and the clients do not like that feeling of being stuck to the bed. It feels very disgusting. So most clients sweat, so I highly recommend getting exam paper. If you don't, you're gonna find that they're going to sweat on this. They're gonna stick to it and they're gonna be lifting themselves off because it feels uncomfortable. And I find that the paper is just, it is more waste, unfortunately, but I just prefer the paper. And then when I'm waxing, I place the sticks at the foot, uh, at the foot of the table. So if I did not have this paper down, I couldn't do that because it would stick to the wax pad. You could always have a trash can beside you, but I just, I'm an exam paper babe, and that's just how I do things. You may have a different preference, but that is how I like to set up for my services. And then when my clients come in, they go ahead, I have a chair in the corner, they just throw a waist down, pop up on the table, get situated, do their service. And then when they get off, I roll this up, place it in the trash. I'll go in with my cabicide wipes, let that dry, then I'll go ahead and do the same setup for the next client. I feel like that's common sense, but who knows? Some people are not taught or trained or you just want to find like the most efficient way. That's how I do it. So hopefully that did help someone. But I'm going to go ahead and get ready for her. And I'll see you guys a little bit later. My dress does go up a little too high. Because when you do want to switch them the side they're laying on, you can make it feel like I always wear a bun when I'm getting this done. You what? I always wear a bun when I'm getting this done. Oh, you know what? Oh, but you're on that side. I push <laughs> it's not bad. Through, so. It's not bad. It's fun day. Isn't my hair thinning out so good? Oh, God, yeah. Okay. I haven't done anything since um, since my last appointment. Remember, I had a little bit of hair. Yes. And then you lasered it. It's getting thinner. And, and then. Is this the third or fourth time? No, this is like. Fifth? Yeah. Okay, yeah. That makes sense. And when you did it the next day, like it fell out. Yep. So I just we'll left. in there and then. I just left it, and then I think I tweezed a little bit, and I've been good ever since. I haven't done anything. When I had, um, when I waxed Andrea, she was saying, she's like, I hate that it comes back on the labia, and I'm like, I think that's just how it is, because my clients who have laser, uh -huh. they're bald on the top, and then they have hair on their labia and I feel like that has to be I feel like they just didn't hit it nothing going on. oh okay all my clients with laser they have labia hair because it's harder to see in that yeah that's true oh my god let me just find it on I don't know where the buttons are no <laughs> I didn't know that there we go I never use these but that hand that up we go. Still can't bring myself to buy a bed. To buy a uh, table? Yeah. Uh huh. I've got Marie catching herself and training her because she keeps calling it a bed. I'm like, honey, the last word you want to use when men walk in is a bed. It's a, it's a treatment table. Do you use like a gauze? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. You don't use gauze? I never noticed that. I use the cotton rounds. We use gauze for so much medical stuff that... Oh, that's actually a really good idea. Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. The ones you can have, like, we use at home for eye makeup remover. Uh-huh. I use that for my... I use gauze for everything. Okay. I, use... I don't know. I don't like those rounds. And then it was cotton everywhere, and... You do have to get. I do notice if I don't use certain ones, the, the lint ones that have to is be smooth. If you don't get those, I just now found a brand that I like. As I tell you, I use 
But that's because we use God's perspective. Like, I have to have God's for my triplet. Like, there's so many services we need God's for that I'm not going to buy two different things. That's true. It adds up. Expose this. I do feel like, I don't know if it hurts less as I come or if I just get used to no, it. No, it hurts less. Okay. So your skin is giving out, so the, it's going to hurt more here because you're darker here. Okay. Because you there's more melanin for the laser to see. Your hair gets thinner and less, so less energy is going in. The, more, the darker it is and the thicker the hair is, the more energy that's going into it. So as your skin lightens, then you have to crank it up. Okay. So like when I'm doing hyperpigmentation on the face, I'm like going up every like second appointment. Because there's, it's not going to see the difference in the melanin. That's why I was hitting way over here. Okay. Those, those yes. spots that had hyperpigmentation. Uh-huh. I'm trying to lighten those. And I hate to use the word lighten when I'm doing that Yeah, I'm trying to think of... People are like, I don't want my skin bleached. I'm like, okay. I don't know another but, word. I, but you get it. But when I, So when I'm talking to somebody not in the business, I try to say, it's going to even out your skin. Yeah, out. that's a good way to put it. Yeah. yeah. Because I have one lady. She, oh, it was the one that's coming in next week. Um, okay. I used the word. I said, well, I don't want to bleach my skin. I'm like... And I don't want people to be like, I don't want people thinking that I'm trying to lighten my skin or, you know, like, I'm like, no, 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 okay, I'm using long terminology, let me rephrase. Even out, even out the skin tone is perfect. Yeah, it, it, it gives you an even skin tone, it helps with hyperpigmentation, and then they're like, those are the words they want to hear, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's not really bad today at all. Lighten, they don't want to hear... Because then it's like, wait, are you trying to make me lighter? You know? <laughs> no. No. I was the wrong. I get it. Like, just like you don't want to use the word bed if it's a man flying. Yeah, you, know? <laughs> you don't ever want to put those thoughts. Uh, never. Somebody said it yesterday when she was making the table up. And she goes, I'm going to make the bed. I mean, the table. <laughs> She's like, because we're not that kind of spa. Uh. I'm like, honey, there ain't enough money in the world. No happy endings. There ain't enough money in the world to make me want to work like that. <laughs> Maybe in my 20s, if there was enough money offered. <laughs> but no. No, I'm like, I couldn't imagine. Me. There's a place by the airport for that. You go to Lucky Spa. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Oh my God. Hey guys, so it is Saturday. I haven't vlogged in a couple days. I just got my wax delivery. So I'm going to fill up my 
big wax container and show you how I do that. I need to wipe this down really quickly, but I have this big container that I believe is from either Home Goods or Ross, but you can get these from Walmart anywhere and it feel, it holds like 20 something pounds of wax for me. So, I have really, really enjoyed this container. It's this brand. Oh, see, it's from Burlington or Ross? I wanna say Burlington maybe, $14.99. Whenever I'm looking for stuff for my salon, like basics like this, I always try those stores like Ross and Burlington, Home Goods, because a lot of times it'll be way less expensive. Like half the things in my room are from Ross or Burlington or Home Goods in my house too. So I wipe this down because every now and then I will get some dust on it. So just to keep it looking nice. So I will show you how my wax comes. So my wax comes in this box from Harley Waxing. She delivers, I believe, 10 bags. I forget, I'm a count. But she gives me, I believe, 23 or 26 pounds of wax. I forget because I order it like every two to three weeks. So I forget how much I get. But I will show you how I put it into my container. Actually, let me see how much I actually buy because I want to be accurate. Okay, so I order 10 bags, 26.4 pounds of wax that comes to. I use that every two, two and a half weeks-ish. Is something on my camera? Okay, I think it's okay. So I order wax every two to three weeks depending. She doesn't have bulk bags. Hers come in the 2.2 pound bags. A lot of brands you order from like Miss Sire, Better Than, they'll come in a big wholesale bag. And I prefer that, but this particular company, she does not have those bags, so I have to open them bag by bag, which can be a little annoying, but I'm so used to it now. It is 10.03. My first client at 10.30. I keep a cup inside of my wax to use for scooping. You can buy a scooper. You can use whatever to get the wax out. I only use it for this. And I have found that the cups work better for me than the... Um, Scoopers, the scoopers don't get enough wax out for me, and I don't want a huge, annoying scooper in here. So that's why I use a cup. So I literally go bag by bag. I normally can get almost all the bags in here. A lot of places you order wax from, you can get a subscription and they'll send it to you every however many days you choose and you can link your bank account and all that so you don't have to think about ordering wax. I highly recommend that if you are a full-time waxer with a busy schedule because it's just one less thing to have to remember to purchase. I remember to order my wax because this company doesn't have a subscription but me and the owner are really cool and she sends me an invoice now so she kind of does put me on like auto auto delivery and just takes it out of my account or i mean sends me the invoice and i just hit okay so that has helped me significantly so for all of this wax i believe i pay wholesale three seventy nine just to give you guys a an idea of what things cost oh 
$3.49, I'm sorry. $3.49 with taxes and everything. It came to $374.31 for all this wax. People underestimate how much wax costs, especially if you are a full-time waxer and all you do is wax. So all of our costs are gonna be different. So if you are a waxer, you're gonna spend a lot of money on wax. If you're a facialist, you're gonna spend a lot of money on facial products. So we all have different expenses that are the most expensive for us. And for me, my biggest expenses are my rent, my wax, for sure, and my wax sticks, and my gloves. <laughs> I mean, everything's expensive now, to be honest. You just kind of have to find ways to spend less, which you'll learn over time. But always, always look and make sure that you check other brands and stuff when you're buying products to make sure that you're not overspending. My camera cut off, so I forget what I was saying. I think I was saying just shop around before buying things in bulk or buying things period and make sure that you're getting the best deal you can find or watch creators like me or other estheticians who can kind of help you with stuff like that. I'll do my best to tell you guys where I get things from. It's random. I've noticed in videos I'll mention things. So just take a little note of that because I have bought a lot of things that I have not needed to buy or could have gotten way less expensive. And I just didn't know in the beginning because I didn't know. So when you know better, you do better. So take it from me. When you have a business, you want to hold on to as much money as you possibly can. I was able to fit all of them in here today. These, oh wait, I have one left, so that one's not gonna fit, which is fine. Throw these out and wipe down the table.